Hi, it's Cameron Reynolds, and boy, it is an awesome day. It's fixing to rain again, but we got a little bit of a break. The bees are making the most of it, bringing in all kinds of pollens, yellow, orange, light yellow, and vibrant red from the dead nettle and henbit. Look right across from you. Those are the colonies that we took care of yesterday, and they are actively foraging, bringing in that wonderful pollen. And thankfully, we're getting this nice little spell, but you just never know. I mean, the weather people, I'm sure, do their best, but, you know, they don't always get it right. But one thing that we've got to do is talk about swarming. This is a big question a lot of you ask. It's something that I'm still critiquing, and so this is what you have to do, basically what I'm doing at this point. And there's many different ways to approach this, but in some form or fashion, you have to address swarming. And there's no surefire guaranteed way to just always say 100% this is going to work um, because there are some, some variables within the genetics but what I'm fixing to tell you does work very well and when it comes to anything in beekeeping and life in general even though I hate to admit it dad an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure and we've got to make sure that we are taking the preventative part of swarming in, and putting that into practice before swarming starts taking place once the bees start getting into the mind that we are going to swarm it is much harder to retard that stimuli that they're feeling so what we are doing is going to get into this big hive here it's massive it's too big and you're like well that's great isn't it it is great it's awesome however we've got to cut these bees back because they are so far ahead of the game that they are going to swarm if we don't do something we've got to pull brood we've got to make a split We've got to give them space. A lot of times a combination of all of those things works very well. Now some people, they're beekeepers that like to split and keep small hives. Nothing wrong with that. I like big bees. Now there is a little bit of variables there within how I go about that though. I would rather cut my bees back and take a reduction in honey crop than to have those bees hit the tree. So you know, instead of getting 100 odd pounds of honey in a good year off that colony, I would rather get 80 pounds than have made a good, healthy split off of that colony and not have to worry about swarming. Swarming, I don't have time to go around and collect all the swarms, especially during peak season. And, you know, there's a good chance that sometimes they swarm when I'm not here. I hate losing bees. So let's get into this hive. We're going to show you what we're going to do. We're going to help another colony out. We're going to help keep this colony in the box. Our honey flow does not start till mid-April give or take so we're still two to three weeks away from really good nectar solid nectar flows and uh, you know we don't need this colony to be quite this big at this point but I grabbed them. all right there's a lot of bees you saw a lot of bees out towards the front some of those are foraging but there's a huge class today on all the hives because they've been cooped up of bees taking their first flights that's called orientation flights. And if you don't know what to look for, that can oftentimes look like you're getting a colony that's wanting to swarm. I've got to replace some of these boxes too. Boy, some of these are old. And we've got a couple frames tied down in here. There we go. And that's because they're raising so much drone brood. Well, we definitely don't need to feed this one anymore, Patty. So what we need to do, I'm going to be putting an excluder on this hive as well because I need to start getting the queen in an area that I can know relatively where she's at. There is just brood all over this hive. It wouldn't shock me to see some slight development of these queen cups. Now if you don't know, these are queen cups right here. A good hive is going to have dozens of these and depending on gen genetics you'll have more or less. Just because you have them, that's not a big deal. It's very normal. And when they start drawing them, then that's when things get fun. And basically the rule of thumb is if they are drawn but not capped, you can prevent swarming if you take the right measures. If they're drawn and capped, you really need to find the mated queen and make a split. All right, so we're gonna just pull these bees all the way down to the bottom box. It's gonna be fun. I can't believe how warm it is today. It's warmer than they said it was going to be. We got a decent bit of weight to that top box. And I want to probably pull two frames of brood from this colony. 
We want mainly cap stuff or very close to cap stuff because we're going to be giving it to a smaller colony. We could make a split with that. We're going to try to show you here when we're making our splits what all that looks like. We won't be showing you all the hundreds of them, but we will be showing you how we make them up and you can do the same thing whenever it's time for you to do that. Wow. Hey, look at this red pollen right here. Ah, no, 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 no. Come back. Up here. People want to see you. You're gorgeous. Oh, come on. There it is. Look at that red, beautiful, dead nettle pollen. I don't know if you can see it that well. Ah, it's, it must be a laurel bee. Doesn't like the camera. Am I going to pay for that one later? Doggone it. <laughs> ooh, ooh. This will be a great donor frame. Look at this. We got orange. We have big yellow flakes light yellow flakes this stuff is is this is a perfect frame to give we have all kinds of food stuffs here it is awesome so we are going to take this one out it's plenty warm today main thing is we don't want to take our wonderful queen ah there's that dead nettle pollen up there again okay. i'm not seeing the queen on this side and no queen on this side. Whoa, that one's got a really dusty rump. Yeah, I lost it. It had pollen all over it. Look at that wonderful orange pollen. I'm sorry, I'll get to the video, I promise. I just, I can't help but look at this stuff. Spring is very short. You gotta enjoy it while it lasts. So we are going to set this frame down over against this hive. It'll be fine. The sun is very warm. Those bees on the outside will keep it warm. And I'm gonna put the excluder on the second box today because I don't wanna reduce them down quite yet. I'll do that probably the next time I get into this colony. I'll add honey supers. The main thing is we just wanna retard swarming. Lots of bee bread here. Just tons of larvae in different stages, very young stages to about mm, day four or five, different parts of the frame. All right. This hive, it's just too big. And I mean, honestly, there's just no way I'm gonna keep this from swarming if I just leave it this size. I mean, very few times have I been able to keep a colony like this and just like, okay, let's stick supers on it and just walk away. Um, it's, just, it's just too far ahead of the game. So we're gonna cut them back. It kind of gives them the sense of swarming. Also can give us splits or beef up other colonies. I think this will be a pretty good frame to give. And we're going to give it to a colony that, I don't know if everybody will be excited that I'm gonna give it to the, the, the cutout, but I really wanna give it to the cutout colony. Help that one kind of get a leg up. Tons of bee bread, some larvae. I mean, capped brood in here. They're just starting to cap it. That means they won't have to do a whole lot of work. So let's open up this uh, hive over here and get this stuff in there. I didn't see the queen on that one either. And some of you are gonna be like, what? You're not supposed to mix bees like this. Oh yeah, we do it all the time, but there are rules to everything. All right, so let's check on this feeder right here. We put some feed in here. Um, so you can pop this and you can see the syrup down in here and then you can pull this and see the bees and there they are and it's best if you don't get them out of there but I think I just did I'm sorry I'll fish you out well anyways there we go they're running out get out of there that's why sometimes you disturb your bees, it's actually not good for them. Oh, you found a root, Jimmy. All right. So now we're going to pull this feeder right here. There's no, no bees over there. And we are gonna take some of these frames out. I could just leave them to their own devices, but I really need to get some brood out of that colony now. And I'd like to just help this one out a little bit. And so we are going to, well, look at that condensation right there. 
Interesting. Now I did warm up the sugar syrup when it was placed in there. Get on out. Get on out. All right. I'm not used to this kind of stuff right here. Ooh, they've glued. Now that's the pollen padding I'm feeling down there, I think. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling. So I'm gonna stick that right there. Definitely different than what I'm used to. Okay, look at this right here. They're, they're clustered up against this foundation. I'm just curious to see if they've drawn any of it. Wouldn't that be cool? Well, yeah. They've started drawing a little bit over there. Awesome. What is this, like 30 hours removed? Two days? Yeah, I guess it's. Uh, this is less than two days. So, wow, they're drawing over here. That's, that's awesome. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna stick this foundation over here. And we are gonna place these frames of brood in there. Now, some people would just stick it in. I've done that before. I am actually gonna shake this off into the hive. So let's take these, give us a little bit more room. And I don't know if this is a good idea or not. I really don't. But I just feel like if the bees have to walk over that and all the forager bees are going to fly back home. It's the old bees that typically give you problems. Oh, look right here. There's bees hatching out. That's going to give immediate aid to this colony. Now that there's not a whole lot of bees over here, on this frame. I'm gonna go ahead and shake the next one. Keep in mind they only have one frame of brood right here. These other two are honey. So I'm not gonna be really giving them too much brood to guard. That's the main thing is you don't want to give a little colony too much brood to guard. They have to be able to maintain the temperature, have to be able to do a lot of things to keep that brood healthy. This time of the year, with all the nectar and foodstuffs coming in, let's get rid of that. Just gonna go ahead and. Well, I didn't bring a bucket out here today. I'll scrape it up there for now. I really don't like plastic frames um, that much. They definitely work. The bees will work them, but um, I don't like the feel of plastic, and they do tend to, in my opinion, burn them up a little bit more. But they definitely work. All right, I'm gonna scoot that over. Keep in mind, this is a honey frame. They've already gotten used to this one, so I'm gonna leave that just like that. And then we are going to take this one that is the youngest of the brood, because they just capped this, and we're gonna place this here in the middle. And then we are gonna take this frame, after scraping that off, and scraping this bottom part off. Yeah, I had to crush a few drones in the process, but it needs to be able to accommodate all that space and everything down below and whatnot. All right, so now they've got a ton more bees fixing to hatch out shortly. And we're gonna give them back their foundation. Man, what a beautiful spring day this has turned out into. I'm really happy. The bees seem to be very happy as well. And you know what? So. I've kind of kept it how the bees naturally would have it. Food frames, brood frames in the center. And the bees know pretty well what they like, so I try to keep it similar to what they would naturally do. We'll be putting all that back together in a minute. Back to this colony. Now one thing I'd really like to do, and this is typically what I do this time of the year when we can still drop down into the low 30s, and a lot of it depends on temperature. You know, if we're in summertime, that's good. I, I have enough bees in there to cover that brood. But if we drop down, you know, we might even, we've had days get in the 20s this time of the year. I really hope we don't. I'm gonna shake in another frame of young bees. And also, I just really think that'll help this colony gear back down a little bit because it's just way ahead of the game. The main thing is we don't wanna get the queen in here, so. Boy, those bees, just look how shiny their wings are and their bodies. 
you can just tell they're healthy. Just look at those bees shine. They just, man, looks good. It's fat old drone. I'm not seeing the queen anywhere in there. All right. Check the bottom a little bit. This is really going to retort swarming. And it hasn't started yet, mind you. But I promise you, it, that colony will want to start doing it in the next week or two. And I just, I know my season. So we're going to shake those bees off now. There is a big population of bees in there. They're going to go over and accept that queen because she's laying. She's doing what she needs to do. And it'll be just fine. We'll keep you updated on that colony over there. So you're like, well, now what? I mean, still look at all these bees. We've got all kinds of bees at the bottom of this box. We've got bees up here. We've got tons of bees out in the field, and that whole bottom box is covered in bees. Well, one, we're going to put some combs in here that are drawn, and we are going to give that queen laying room. That's another part of this equation. So, let's see here. There's another thing that I like to do is get the brood out of this box. Also, the queen might be up in here. That's one of the problems with triple deeps. Most of my colonies aren't triple deeps, but some of them I just didn't take that extra box off of. I just didn't get around to it. All right. Wow, gorgeous. They've already covered that back. Stick that over in here. A lot of bee bread on that one. And now we are going to take this brood comb and place it right in here. And then, oh guys, by the way, guys and gals, check this one out. What do you think about that? Some people say throw that away. Mold happens. It happens in our house. Occasionally we, we the kids leave a banana somewhere they're not supposed to and we don't find it till later and uh, thank you Jimmy if you ever watch this years down the road you know, payback is coming <laughs> it almost looks like they've written like a uh, bee runes or something look at that that's kind of weird maybe I'm just imagining stuff but anyways what we are going to do is take a mark like this right here this is a one-year-old comb it got a little bit of moisture um, through one of the lids and the sides on a different hive and the, the colony was fine. They, I took a little space off of them, but this this was the only comb like that. That was all bee bread down there, and it just molded. Got too much moisture in it. It happens. That comb is in great shape. Woo! That bee is not happy. And um, whenever the bees kind of tag you like that, it never hurts to kind of give a little smoke in the area where they did that at. I've been in this colony a while. Doing the video always leaves me in them longer than I normally would. But mold happens. This is a one-year-old comb. has plenty of life left in it. They'll clean that out no problem. There is no molds that we know of that are harmful to the bees that are just like on the combs. You can visibly see like that. They clean them up. They chuck them out. Now, I mean, they might do a tiny bit of like... I know they stress the bees cleaning it out probably. But we're going to try to come back here in a week or so. And we're going to check that three-stripe frame right there. And we'll see what that thing looks like in a week from now. I bet you won't be able to see any mold at all. It'll probably look like it just come fresh out of a hive with all kinds of nectar coming in. All right. Get off me, bee. Thank you. So let's move this lid. We need to consolidate this brood down right here. I want to move this smoker here. This is an old box right here. This box is... 12 years old or so. I never came back and repainted it. And I didn't paint the top edges of it. And that's where I'm getting the problems. Look at all this. This is why you paint up in here, folks. I know it's a pain. Nobody likes doing it. It'll save your equipment. Make them last a whole lot longer. Look at all those bees. Goodness gracious. There might be two queens in here, too. There's, there's, there's drone brood here. There's drone brood, brood over here. Unbelievable. So I'm going to pull from the edges over here. I'm 
Now this right here, there's honey in it. That's what I was wanting to go for. Now the bees, you're gonna have to give them a little bit more smoke because what's going on right now? I'm in the bottom box. All these forager bees are coming in. What are the forager bees or the grumpy bees? And they're, they're coming in this box, wanting to go to the second or third story, and they're like, what in the world's going on here? Beekeeper's been messing around again. That is a great frame of bee bread. Wow, is that brood? Scoop, scoop, scoop. Wow, look at all that calf brood over there. Tons of drone brood on this one. Wow, okay. So this is where we're gonna stop. Try not to bang the frames like that. They don't really like that. And then I'm gonna go to this other side over here. And what we're doing is we're gonna be pulling away some of these resources. This hive has resources all over the place. So moving a little bit around is not gonna hurt this hive because they just have so much right now. It's just not gonna hurt anything. This is pretty much empty. Yeah, that's just empty on that side. Lots of bee bread on this side. We'll probably pull this frame out of the hive entirely and give that, um, we'll save that for the freezer to feed back to our queen rearing colonies. Always gotta make sure that the queen rearing colonies have lots of bee bread, lots of protein. Oh, there's the queen. What in the world? Check that out right there. There is a queen, I should say. And she doesn't have a mark. Hmm. Well, we'll probably go ahead and put the excluder on this bottom box. Maybe. Unbelievable. Now I'm curious if we've got multiple ones in here. It wouldn't shock me at all. All right, here's another moldy comb right here. And yeah, I put that in the wrong, wrong position. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and keep that queen over there on that side. We're just gonna go ahead and stick this one in a single brood. And for multiple reasons. One, because I'm curious to see if we have two queens. And so if we have young stuff here in a week, when we come back to check that frame, we're gonna know that we have multiple queens, which will be awesome. If it is, we'll probably split them. Okay. There's just all this burr comb. There's so many bees in the way too. All right, this is pretty moldy right here. It misshapen that a little bit. That's from the moisture. It just, it uh, takes away from the integrity of the combs. So that's why you need to keep your combs from getting rained on or just moist in general. We're gonna stick that in the middle of this and that's going to give, once they clean that out, the queen will be able to lay in that. We are going to definitely add more combs down in here. Excuse me, Laurel. We're gonna probably take these, yeah, these two right here. Just draw in combs. One there. And even though the queen might not come over here and lay both of these up, if they're bringing in resources, they can deposit it over in here. I'm gonna remove this burr comb, and then I'm gonna add the queen excluder, and then we're gonna go above, and we are going to try to see if there's another queen because there's brood all over the place in this hive. And, you know, it's just, it's amazing. Excuse me. Comb melt that down. It's good to save all this. It really adds up. All right, that's good enough. So let's see. Laurel, hand me that queen excluder, please. Man, there's lots of red pollen coming in today. Today is just an awesome spring day. I hope you all get a day like this pretty soon. If you're not already having it. I know I'm going to hear from someone in Canada here in a second. Like, we got, we still got snow. I'm sorry, guys. Can't do anything about it. But you guys could come down here and hang out if we can get a day put together. All right, so this is the box that we haven't identified what is and what is not in it. So I'm gonna stick it right here. 
just so it's easy for me to get a hold of. And uh, I'll start from over on this corner. It's a pretty light frame. Not a whole lot of, you know, there's a little bit of nectar in there. Not a whole lot though, pretty light frame overall. Set that over here. That's what? There's gotta be two queens in here. Yeah, there's eggs. Laurel, let's keep an eye out. Unless she dropped down that far, which isn't impossible, but you know, it just they usually don't drop. I mean I did rotate the boxes in another video, but still. I thought I felt something when I put that down. Remind me to pick that up. So we have brood in this one. This hive is huge. And so, you know, a hive like this, if it's got two queens in it, then we are going to have to probably cut back again. I mean, look at all this brood. That's all hatching out right there. That's great. It's excellent. One thing I'm looking for when I see emerging brood like that is I look for signs of the queen laying because it is very often that soon after that brood emerges, if she can get to it, she's going to go back and lay to that. They're very attracted to the pheromone that the bees release as they're emerging from the cells, which is very smart. Oh, there's just eggs all in there. You see, we know that these eggs have to be within three and a half days old. Now see, I'm seeing a little bit here, but I'm not seeing it like covered in eggs. I mean, there's a pretty good bit up in there, but she's missed some over here, which leads me to think that maybe she was over here in the next day or so. Which means she might be on a frame or two. Might even be on this one, but I don't see her. Interesting. Well, this is turning out to be a lot longer of a video than I thought. This is just full of just resources, primarily a little bit of cap brood in here. But this hive has got to be cut back. Lots and lots of bee bread in this frame. An unbelievable amount. This feels like it's pretty heavy. Maybe the queen did drop that far, but then I didn't go through all that second box extremely well. Hmm. Well, she's definitely not here, and I don't think she's going to be on the next frame either. I'm going to go ahead and check one more over, and then we're going to show you what we're going to do. All right, there's, there's very few bees on this one. It feels like mainly resources. What I want to do is get all of the brood in this box, really. And see, I know there's, there's more efficient ways of doing this than what I'm doing, but I'm having fun here. All right, so we got the queen in the bottom. That's excellent. She's doing a great job. Resources. Resources. that towards the entrance. All right, let's get into this one right here. Is that the moldy one? It certainly is. Well, we can stick it over in this one. That's the other one. Here's brood. Keep an eye out for that queen. You never know. If this is all the work of one queen, then we really like her quite a lot. All 
Ah, just you can smell that bee smell. It's wonderful. <sighs> wonderful time of the year. Okay, this might be it right here. And yeah, maybe, and we rotated the boxes in the last video. Maybe uh, we rotated her all the way to the bottom and she just stayed down there, which is perfect. This is loaded full of brood, young stuff. Tons of young stuff. Check that out, Laurel. Can you get a good shot of that? All right. We're gonna stick this in here. Then we're just gonna put this hive back together. I'm sorry I've run this video pretty long. And one thing I do quite often so I'll shake the bees off like that. It's some people think it's really hard on them. It's really not that bad. And uh, you know, it makes it easier not to crush bees when you're putting it all back in there. Now I've got my nine frame spacer. And we will even those out. All right, that looks like it's all the brood right there. What did I do with that nine frame spacer, Laurel? It's probably buried. Oh, where did that come from? All right, so space that out right there. And what's going to happen is all this brood is going to hatch out of the top. They'll be able to, to use this for storage space and help keep that queen and room down below. Next time we come in here, we know exactly where the queen's at, which is very handy for us. We're also going to know once all the brood gets down below where all the swarm cells are going to be. If we want to pull brood, we know where all the brood's going to be. It's very, very handy to do so. But right now, again, we've got to cut these bees back or they are going to leave. All right, so in conclusion, we went ahead and added a whole other story. We have the queen down below underneath the excluder. I didn't find another queen, but that still remains to be seen. And we just thought, well, we're, we already have the, the box. We're just going to throw it on here. So it's got plenty of head space. We've reduced them quite a bit. This colony has now got a big boost. I mean, look right now, they're covering almost five frames of bees. And then on top of that, once all that brood hatches out of these two frames, this colony is going to start growing at a very nice, wonderful rate. It's gonna help that colony a lot. So anyways, we will come back here in about a week and see how they clean up that moldy frame, see how this colony's doing. It probably will need maybe cut back again, but we've gotta do this to our champs in order to keep them from swarming. We're still gonna produce a lot of honey off of this colony. We're gonna help that colony out. It works really good. This colony already feels like it just let off a, a little bit of swarm. They're not gonna to wanna to swarm anytime soon. Thanks for watching our videos. If you have any questions on what we did here, Leave them below.